Now, Paul Beatty is the first American writer to win the Man Booker Prize for his caustic satire, satire rather, on US racial politics. He's admitted his novel, The Sellout, might be a difficult book for some readers to digest. Paul Beatty joins us now from London. Paul Beatty, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. This book was turned down no less than, by less, no, no less than 18 times by British publishers. D did you ever lose faith? No, I, I don't think so. Um, I didn't know what was happening behind the scenes, so I, I, there was nothing to worry about. It was, I was ignorant to the whole thing. So, but when you very much want to be published and when it's a very competitive time and a difficult time for everyone to get published and you're being turned down, how do you prevent yourself from writing to suit the publishers or suit the market? How do you stay true to your real inner voice? Yeah, I don't, I don't know any other way to do it. You know, I, uh, I wish I knew how to do it another way. That's not true, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, I can only tell the stories uh, that I can tell and tell them the way that I tell them. And I can't imagine doing it any other way. And I have to have faith in publishers. I got very lucky to be published by One World this time around and somebody took a risk. You know, I take a risk when I write. And yep. I think people can recognize that and are appreciative of that. Uh, Paul Beatty, your, your book's been compared to the great satires of Jonathan Swift and Mark Twain, yet I, I've read, if I've read this correctly, that you don't like being described as a satirist. I, I, is that so? And if that's so, why is that? Yeah, I think uh, that, that label is like really, uh, really limiting. And yeah. uh, I think it, it builds in these expectations that I don't necessarily want to live up to, which is, I don't know, I, I saw this documentary about Mark Twain not so long ago. and. You know, you had to entertain all the time, and I just, <laughs> I'm not much of an entertainer. And, uh, yeah, so I'm just, you know, it's not about pressure. I just I just want that freedom to do what, it, what I want to do and and not have to live up to some expectations. But it's, it is a clearly um, a tough book and, and will be for, for people who haven't read it or might not know about it. The book's narrator decides mm. to reinstate segregated schools, takes on a slave in his yeah. home district of, of Dickens, Los Angeles. How did, this, how did this really quite outrageous and provocative way of trying to write about race relations come to you? Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I don't really know. There was like a, like there's this phrase, fight fire with fire, which, mm -hmm. and I, in a weird way, I was like, I'm going to try to fight racism with racism, you know? Yes. <laughs> and just kind of like turn all this stuff on its head about how we look at, you know, uh, race and cultural relations in the U.S. and just kind of use history, like to to make, hopefully make readers realize that the past is not so far away and we're we're uh, recycling all kinds of events and just because we use these words and associate them with an american history in the past don't mean that they aren't applicable today and just these i just i'd love the idea of like looking at slavery and segregation in a contemporary context it was just such a challenge and i just love trying to explore that what's your experience of racism been like in contemporary america <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. It's mine. That's a great, that's a great response. Just, just <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 partly it's how it's impossible to answer questions like that, you right. know, uh, and, you know, and just always being, yeah, forced to answer these kind of questions yeah. and uh, like that you can't sum up in, in a sentence. I, I at least I can't. You know, I mean, it's. Every day is different. I'm different every day. People are different. So there's, it's hard for me to, to quantify. And it's like this, you know, there's so many things. It's like if I was to ask you what sex is like in, you know, contemporary Australia, how could you answer that? Oh, you know? mate, and, I could give you that answer and, in 20 seconds. I could give it to you in 20 minutes. Uh, please, like. I'd love to hear that. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, other than, I mean, you know, it's anytime you have to deal with it, it's, you know, that part is, is the pain in the ass part is, I think, a given, you know. Well, that's but, but, you know, but that's, that's, the, that's to, to that's, answer that. Yeah. It, that's the lived reality of it, I guess, and, and that's the, the crucial thing. I wanted to ask you, though, for those of us watching from abroad, um, are, are there any truths, do you think, if, if any, that we might be learning about America from this presidential race, and particularly from your point of view as someone who watches race relations very closely in America? Yeah, it's just, it's, um, you know, for me, I think one of the truths is, is about... Uh, that identity politics and this nation, this notion of whatever identity politics isn't necessarily about being a person of color. I mean, I think, you know, Trump and to another extent, the Democrats are using identity politics for their own means. And I think, you know, this thing of like, 
being white in America. I mean, Trump is is a is an is an you know the fact that he has any support is such an indicator of the the insecurity of the nation. And um, you know, and, and that's a lot of people. Like whether he loses by um, you know twenty percent, thirty percent. I mean, he's, th- there's a lot of people that are listening to him and and taking his his rhetoric and his anger very seriously and. Yeah, and it's just uh, I drove cross country not so long ago, mm-hmm. and I had a Bernie Sanders shirt on. And, you know, I would go in these places, and uh, you know, people would react to me, and I would, you know, I, f- I would forget that I had the shirt on. But people had so much to say when they saw that shirt, and they just would j- run to me and be like, "Oh, you know, I loved him, or I didn't like him, but what's going on?" And it just, it's, the, it's the nation is 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 very fearful now. I mean, I think it's always fearful, yeah. but there's another little heightened insecurity that people aren't sure how to how to deal with, you know. And you know, the Trump way and to some extent the the Clinton way are are very comfortable for people. So um yeah, I, I, it's hard to it's hard for me to answer that, you know. Well, and, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what re- result we get on the eighth, and then what, what consequences flow in the days and weeks afterwards. Yeah. But it's been terrific talking to you this morning, Paul Batty. Thanks so much, and congratulations uh, again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you.